Now, the British economy may be in trouble, but at least it's not in the state of some place like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where the average worker earns something like 30 or 40 pounds a month. Yet an investigation by this program and The Guardian has discovered that an American so-called vulture fund is planning to extract a small fortune from the Congo. Previous Newsnight reports on vulture funds, which buy up debt cheaply and then sue developing countries for vast amounts, got the law of this country changed. The vultures cannot now use UK courts. But as Greg Palace reports, they've found a way round the ban by filing lawsuits in Jersey. His report begins in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We're heading out of the capital, Kinshasa. The cholera epidemic is sweeping the country. I'm driving to an encampment where the victims are cared for in quarantine. It's still a struggle for the people here, in a nation just now recovering from years of civil war. This place is uh, what we call a cholera treatment center, uh -huh. here, set up uh, uh, in Kinshasa, uh -huh. uh, part of the town called Kinkabwa. They've already treated 8,000 cholera patients, including 11-year-old Edoma Ensako. He had cholera, but now he's better. It's simple. What's needed here is clean water. The question is, why don't they have it? Here's what's happened. A financial speculator known as a vulture has blocked Congo from receiving $100 million owed to the African nation. He says that money's owed to him. In this village, the British government and UNICEF dug a well. At a cost of less than $2,000, they were able to provide clean water cholera-free water for 400 people. That still leaves 50 million Congolese without clean water. The vulture paid just $3 million for Congo's debt, but he wants 100 million of Congo's money in return for it. I asked the director of the UNICEF project what 100 million could do here. 200,000 uh, 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 children who have their life saved. So $100 million, 200,000 children saved. saved. saved yeah. So how did a New York vulture end up claiming $100 million on a $3 million debt from one of the world's poorest countries? The story began 30 years ago when Yugoslavia built power lines for the Congo. They hadn't finished paying for the lines when both Congo and Yugoslavia slipped into civil war. 100,000 died as Yugoslavia split into seven separate countries and millions died in Congo. Somehow, in all this mayhem, vulture speculators obtained the right to collect that power line debt owed by the Congo. The vulture paid $3 million, but wanted back more than 30 times that amount. I've come here to Sarajevo, the center of another bloody conflict, to find out how the vultures got their hands on this debt. I've obtained information that the two key players are these men. First, an American, Michael Sheehan, and second, Bosnia's own former prime minister, Nejad Brankovic. The pylons for Congo were made here at the state-owned company called Energo Invest. The company once was the powerhouse of the Bosnian economy. Now police are investigating how its assets were stripped, leaving the company in ruins and thousands unemployed. Ten years ago, the state-owned company was being run by Mr. Brankovic. He became prime minister, but had to quit after he was indicted for corruption. Drew Sullivan and his team at the Center for Investigative Reporting in Sarajevo are the ones that took down the prime minister. Well, this is the apartment that cost him his job as prime minister. Oh, what happened? Well, how did it cost him his job? Well, the, uh, the government bought this apartment for $240,000 and then said it didn't need it, and he bought it off the government for a very slow, low price. How much did you pay? Paid $800. $800? Yeah. So wait, government paid $240,000. A week later, he picks up for $800. Yep. Is that, uh, is that considered corruption here? Well, they, they indicted him for it. Brankovic was indicted, but the case had to be dropped last year after all the paperwork mysteriously disappeared. 
But at the same time as Mr. Bronkovich was buying state property on the cheap, he was also talking about the old Congo debt with a vulture. This is the man, Michael Sheehan. Familiar? He's the first vulture we exposed back in 2007. The man who called himself after a James Bond villain, Goldfinger. Goldfinger. Newsnight exposed how Goldfinger squeezed millions out of Zambia. It turns out he also targeted Congo. In 2001, he signed a deal with the Bosnian Brankovic's people to see if he could get a cut. The transaction was more than suspect. Time to see the cops. This is the office of the chief of the financial police. We obtained a police report, never before made public. It says Bronkovich secretly arranged to sell Goldfinger's friends the debt for just $3 million, and that this was a crime. Was it illegal for Bronkovich to sell the debt off to the vultures? Of course it is illegal. That's why we filed a criminal complaint. And this crime is abuse of power. We have identified the criminal intent, the elements of the crime, and who did it. So why would Bronkovich do this? What's his motive? <laughs> we ask ourselves that, too. Every crime has a motive. Uh, did you find any evidence of a motive? If something is worth 100,000 euros, say, and you sell it for 10 or 15,000, you tell me what's happening there. If Brankovic is convicted, can he go to jail for this crime? He must. He should go to jail. Vultures swooped on Congo in its darkest hour as it descended into civil war. One week after Goldfinger got his hands on the debt, the president was assassinated. Six other nations invaded Congo, and millions were dead. So there was no real government of Congo and no one to argue Congo's case when the vultures sued. So they were easy prey for the vultures. Vultures, like the hunted packs, worked together. Goldfinger slipped the Congo debt to a friend of his, Peter Grossman, at FG Hemisphere, in return for Goldfinger's commission of over half a million dollars. Then, the story switches from Congo to the real heart of darkness, New York City, home of FG Hemisphere. FG attempted to grab the diplomatic buildings of the Congo, but a judge said no. As American courts started to resist the vultures' demands, they began to go after any company anywhere in the world that traded with Congo. China refused to let them sue China Railways, and Britain brought in a new law after we exposed the vultures. But they found a loophole in a surprising place. They realize that the law doesn't apply in places such as Jersey and Guernsey. Places are often seen as tax havens and where lots of money is held. And they realize that there was money there held by Congo and they've sued for $100 million in Jersey. And they've won that case. Congo has appealed to the Privy Council in London little hope there. The law is the law, loopholes and all. But there is one hope for Congo before the vultures can swoop in and grab their cash. The Jersey government has brought in a consultation considering the law, and so I'm heading out there next week to talk to the government and meet with concerned citizens who are pushing for the law to be adopted. So if it is passed in time before the final appeal, then the $100 million for Congo could still be saved. If Jersey doesn't act, instead of the 100 million going to the Congo, the poor nation's money will end up here at 300 Calb Avenue in Brooklyn, New York, the address of the Vultures Fund, FG Hemisphere. It seems to be a garage. FG's owner is Peter Grossman. I thought we should chat. Mr. Grossman, hi, Greg Palace, BBC oh, and Guardian. Do you think it's fair that your vulture fund has sought $100 million from the Congo 
Yeah, I do, actually. Well, you do, for can a debt I that you paid only $3 million dollars for. Well, that's not true. But we'd seen the Bosnian police documents that said that Mr. Grossman's company did pay just $3.3 million dollars for the debt and that it was illegally sold to them. But do you know that uh, the transfer of the debt to you was called a crime by the police? Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not. You're not familiar with that? And I'm not beating up the Congo. I'm collecting on a legitimate claim. You're itself. collecting on a legitimate claim. So you that, hun in other words, your hundred, the hundred million is, goes better to you than UNICEF, which says that it could use that hundred million but to save 200,000 lives. This kind of guerrilla journalism doesn't work for me. Back in the Congo, school kids are waiting for their school to get clean water, maybe even desks or chairs. What's your favorite subject? Mathematics and French. Mathematics and French. This is Congo's hope. This is Congo's future. Unless, of course, the vultures snatch it away. Well, that was Greg Pavel.